Hi and welcome to church. We're so glad that you joined us. As we begin our time together, can I just ask you to open up your Bibles to 1 John chapter 4 verses 7 to 12. 1 John chapter 4 verses 7 to 12. I'm reading from the New Living Translation. This is what it says. Dear friends, let us continue to love one another for love comes from God. Anyone who loves is a child of God and knows God. But anyone who does not love does not know God for God is love. God showed how much he loved us by sending his one and only son into the world so that we might have eternal life through him. This is real love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son as a sacrifice to take away our sins. Dear friends, since God loved us that much, we surely ought to love each other. No one has ever seen God But if we love each other, God lives in us and his love is brought to full expression in us. Isn't that amazing as the whole world celebrates Valentine's Day today, we celebrate of the greatest love that ever was, the love of God for each one of us. Yes, you who are watching right now, God loves you so deeply. You were worth dying for and that's why he sent Jesus for you. And as we get into this time of worship, can I urge each of us that we will focus our eyes and our hearts towards god and his great love towards us that in itself is the greatest reason to worship him today let's worship together Looking for the words to help me say that my heart is full of love and praise. Can say in the deepest heart. 
I am so filled with joy just worshiping today and just being able to fix my mind and my hope and my thoughts all on just the goodness of God and his first love for me and my love for him. And you know, we're in a time, a season right now where there's a lot of things that want to divide us. And Jesus prayed that we would all be one. And it's so, so important that we are one in him, one in his spirit, and that we're loving each other. So this song is just a prayer for unity. Lord, we do pray that we can humble ourselves, that we can forgive, that we can love, and that the world will know that you are the Savior and that we are your people by our love. Savior. 
is stronger than all sickness. There's healing in his hands. And he's stronger than addiction. He sets the captives free. And he's stronger than depression. His joy is our strength. Yes, he's stronger than the darkness. In him is only light. And he's stronger than all sickness. There's healing in his hands. And he's stronger than addiction. He sets the captives free. Oh, he's stronger than depression. Father, we just praise you at this time. We thank you. We love you, Lord. We thank you for your great love towards us. We thank you for your love is truly everlasting. We thank you that, Lord, it outlives us, Lord, and it goes from generation to generation. We praise you, O oh Father. We thank you. We thank you for, Lord, the grace that you have showered upon us. We thank you, Lord, for all that you have blessed us with. We thank you for life, health, and strength. And, Lord, even at this time, even, Lord, as we are at your feet, I pray that each person right now who's crying out to you, each person who has that unspoken need, Lord, that they cannot even put the words to, I pray that you will hear from heaven, that, Lord, you will answer them, Father, that you would give them a word, you would give them a sign, that you will move on their behalf. Father, I pray right now for the, the nations of the world. We pray, Lord, where there is strife, where there is struggle, that, Lord, you will move in in your power, that, Lord, you will pro protect your people, that, Lord, you will protect the land, you will protect the innocents, and that, Lord, your justice will reign supreme. Father, I pray at this time for the women and the children around the globe, Father. I pray for the least fortunate, O oh Father, the ones who do not get justice, the ones who don't have equality. Father, we pray that your presence would move upon them. I pray that, Lord, you would intercede for them. You would stand for them, O oh Lord, and that you will do something mighty. I pray right now for the nation of India. I pray from the north to the south, to the west and the east, that, Lord, your power would move across the place. We pray for the churches of the land. I pray, Lord, that as we raise our voices and worship you, Father, that you will do something supernatural in this place. Father, we pray, Lord, at this time for our gov the governance of the land. We pray for our leaders. We bless them in Jesus' name. We pray that, Lord, all that they are purposed to do, they will accomplish. I pray that they will do what is right and just in your eyes. Father, I pray right now for every social worker, every frontline worker. Lord, we just pray your protection over them. We pray your health over them for their families. Lord, we right now pray for the farmers of the land. We pray for those who work hard, Lord, to make ends meet. Those who provide us all that we have, Lord. We pray right now that you will move on their behalf. You will do something afresh. We pray that laws will move, be passed, Lord, that will work out for them. We pray that, Lord, the most downtrodden, the destitute, 
that their voices will be heard, that Lord, we will speak up on their behalf, that we will be silent no more. Father, I pray right now for individual needs. Father God, I pray that as we raise our voices to you, as we look heavenwards, that you will hear, you will answer. I pray for bodies to be healed, spirits to be healed. I pray, Lord, for hearts to be mended. I pray, Lord, that there will be no more depression in Jesus name. Father, we pray for failure in the organs, that there will be healing in Jesus name. Father, I pray for autoimmune diseases to be healed. Father, I pray that you will come in in your power. Father, I pray that you will honor those, Lord, who have been walking this journey with faith in you, Lord. I pray that you will come through for them. Lord, I pray for families that need restoration. I pray for marriages that need restoration. I pray for homes in which children are to be born. Father, that you will go before them. You will protect them. You will provide. Lord, I pray for the unspoken needs of your people. That Lord, where our hearts are broken, where our hearts are, are so uh, in, in need of you, that you will meet us. I pray for healing in the innermost parts of people, O oh, Father. May you do something afresh. Move upon us. We ask for a fresh wind. We ask for fresh fire in our lives, Lord, that we will go out and do that which you've called us and created us to do. We love you and we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. Can we declare his goodness? Oh, and you are good. Good. Oh, you are good, good. Oh, you are. God. Thank you, Lord, for your goodness in our lives.
We have a Zoom call every Sunday at 11 a.m. for children. If you have children below the age of 12, they are welcome to join us. We have a Youth Connect every Saturday morning at 11.30 a.m. Teenagers are welcome to join us. If you need prayer or just someone to speak with, please contact us on this number. We would love to get in touch with you since we believe that when we pray together, there is power in agreement. We meet this Wednesday for our weekly fellowship and prayer call. We would love to have you join us. You can DM us on the number given below to get more details. Seeking God every day is necessary in order for us to thrive and to be transformed. We as the church have published a few Bible plans on the YouVersion Bible app. All you have to do is to download the app and search for We Are Zion Chennai on it. You can do the plans alone or with your friends. A desire is that through doing these plans, you will develop a deep love for God and His Word. If you struggle to stay disciplined in your reading of the Bible regularly, we would love to do a plan with you and help you develop this life-changing discipline. Our sermon podcasts are available on your favorite streaming podcast platform. Make sure to search for Sermon Podcast We Are Zion. Our prayer is that as you listen to these podcasts, you will be blessed. Church, it's my joy and privilege to introduce to you our guest speaker for today. Reverend Paul Anbu is the assistant pastor at St. Andrew's Kirk here in Chennai. He and his wife, Beulah, have been longtime friends of our family. Um, they have two lovely children, Andy and Adora. And Paul and his wife, Beulah, have been a great inspiration to us as to how to be faithful in following God and taking your family along on the journey. And uh, let's just give him a warm welcome and let's hear what God has to say through him to us. Hello, everyone. Greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It's such a joy to be a part of We Are Zion family. I've been personally enjoying the services, the worship sessions and the word as well. Uh, I'm just... Uh, overjoyed to be a part of uh, We Are Zion, especially participate in the ministries that God has called uh, Pastor Gershom and his family to do it. We've been encouraged personally by Gershom and Tina and the way that uh, God is present in their families and in their ministries as well. For this morning's devotion, I've taken a um, uh, topic, God's care or our loving shepherd. And I want to read uh, um, a verse from Psalm 32 through the words of David, Psalm 32, 8. Here's what God declares. I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will guide you with my eye. I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. And I will guide you with my eye. What a beautiful promise for us children, isn't it? God's care, God's love. And God's promises are amazing. And in this, the word I refers to a God who is out of age, who is timeless. He is a God who lives in the eternal now. And this is the God who chooses to say even today, I. Remember, we read this verse so many times during Christmas. It is from Isaiah chapter 9. And the government will be upon his shoulders. This responsibility of this covenantal relationship of how his children are led, the responsibility of this government, this kingdom is upon the king of kings, his shoulders itself. And this I, this great I am declares to us even this morning, I will instruct you and I will teach you the way you should go. The way you should go refers to the way of righteousness there are two ways, a larger gate, a broader path and a narrow path. 
And some of these restrictions are God's ways of righteousness for us to understand who he is and for us to understand who we are in the light of who he is. There's this beautiful way and beautiful precious treasures for us in his word, which he has already declared. I will guide you with my eye. This guidance is out of love and compassion. This God is holy and righteous. And therefore, when we miss the mark, there are lots of times we could make him angry. But this God chooses love and compassion over being angry. That's the love and the guidance that you and I will be enjoying, will continue to enjoy. With my eye, the eye that sees your future, the eye that has seen the past, the eye that sees no one else, what, what no one else has ever seen in our lives, this is the eye that chooses to tell you that I will give my eye on you and I will guide you. What an amazing... In Zechariah, there's a beautiful imagery of God saying that you are the apple of my eye. The imagery of a little maiden comes to our mind. What's a little maiden? It's the inverted image of the person standing in front of you that is found in the pupil of your eye. So when the Bible refers to the apple of my eye, it really means that God is so close to you or you are so close to God or God allows you and me to be kept so close under his care that you are the inverted image in God's eye. That's how much it means for us as we read this. I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will guide you with my eye. What a beautiful promise this is for us, isn't it? I want to look at uh, Abraham and uh, Genesis chapter 22. As we look at three or four points to see how this um, care of God works out in a practical life. Back then and even Today, for you and for me. Genesis 22 talks about the famous incident of uh, Abraham taking his son Isaac to sacrifice. And God blessing him by giving him back Isaac. When the chapter begins, it begins with us pointing to two chapters way behind. Genesis chapter 12 and Genesis chapter 15 where God has promised Abraham, that he will bless this family and the descendants and so the world will be blessed with them. And when that happens, some years later, chapter 22 begins. Chapter 22 begins with, now it has come to pass that after these things, God tested Abraham and said to Abraham, and Abraham said, here I am. God calls Abraham after all these promises and after all these choosing this particular man for his purposes, he chooses to test Abraham. Isn't that very unique? Sometimes our understanding of God and God's care is so different. But mind you, God tests Abraham and does not tempt Abraham. There are two different words. When God tests us, James in the New Testament and the first chapter says that, be patient in trials and tribulation while God tests us, allows all of this to come along our lives. It produces character. It produces um, God's desired character in our lives. And so Abraham, even back then, God allows him to be tested by bringing something. So the same God who promised him a son, who promised, you remember the verse when God took Abraham, asked him to look up to the stars. And he said, I'm going to bless you like the number of the stars, your descendants. He looked at the sand of the uh, shore and said, I'm going to bless you like the number of grains in the sand. And that is the God now who is testing him. And in verse 2, then he said, take now your son. Yes, your only son, Isaac, whom you love. And go to the land of Moriah and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains of which I shall tell you. There's a load of things that are just in that conversation God is having with Abraham. Sometimes God's directions are with his presence. God's directions are with his presence. God asks something very unique. 
He calls Abraham and he says, I want you to give me back the same gift I gave you. Yes, I remember he is this son Isaac who I have promised to you. And yes, I know you love him. But take this son and go to the mountain of the region of Moriah and upon that one mountain that I shall tell you and offer him as a burnt offering. That's very, very, very unique. While this huge tests of God presents itself to Abraham, watch what clearly is visible to us about God in this verse. When God says, go to the land of Moriah, go to the land of Moriah, he's just talking about a region. It's just directionally a pathway, a direction is given to Abraham, but not the exact step. The exact step is found in the last part of verse 2. To one of the mountains which I shall tell you. God doesn't reveal the entire blueprint for us, his children, right? By now, if you're journeying with this God, you would have known that God doesn't declare the whole blueprint. Yes, sometimes he calls us, he gives us the direction. He doesn't declare the whole blueprint for us. But in this way, God also assures his presence. A God who said, go to the land of Moriah and in that region, while you are there, it's going to be three days journey. In the next verse, it's about three days journey for Abraham and his servants and the donkeys and Isaac to go along. In those three days, something very unique happens. And in those three days, at the end of three days, God's going to be there and tell him because that is his promise. I shall tell you, if God has promised that he will lead you and me, then he is responsible to show up at that right time and he will guide you the next step. Abraham's part was to walk these three days journey as that first step that God had called him to do. And in that three days, there's something unique that I believe that has happened. What would have happened is Abraham's skill to listen to God would have developed. In the path of obedience, God develops the skill and the ability to listen to his voice. The preparedness, the desire, the earnest. What's God going to tell me? When is he going to tell me? All of these desires just would have bubbled upon Abraham's heart. And as he walked, this is the skill he would have developed. The ability to listen to God's voice. There's a beautiful promise there also. Yes, God tests us. God gives us something. And sometimes God asks us to walk that path. But as we walk that path, the presence of God is assured to us because it is he who called us and it is he who leads us and it is he who tells, I shall tell you. So don't worry if you're walking through a first part of the something that God has called you to do. You've begun a journey, you've begun a year and God is walking you. You've taken first few steps. The whole path is not clear. Don't worry. God is still with you and me. And if he had promised you this direction, he is going to be with you at that point in that step when you've reached that place and he will tell you which mountain to go and what to do next. So Abraham chooses in verse 3 to rise up early, saddle his donkeys, took two of his young men with him and his son Isaac and he split the wood for burnt offering and arose and went to the place of which God had told him. We don't see any hesitation in this, right? We've heard so many times of the faith of Abraham and Hebrews uh, commends the faith of Abraham also in the New Testament. But what is seen here also is his love for this God. A God who had been having a conversation with him way back in chapter 12, way back in chapter 13, way back in chapter 15. A God who called him and uh, had conversations and had promised and now this precious promise is in his hand. And now it's time for Abraham's love to bubble up and tell God how much he loves. There's no hesitation. There is no disobedience. I mean, just imagine um, Mr. Abraham going to Mrs. Abraham, Sarai, and having a conversation that morning. Just imagine what that conversation would be like. I'm about to take Isaac and I'm going up the mountain. And imagine his wife asking him, for what? 
and imagine him telling and imagine the gender based conversations they would have had a husband to a wife a man to a woman he wouldn't have had any answers to answer i mean just wear your creative cap and think about this but he chooses to pack up and leave just in obedience sometimes obedience is the symbol of our love for god not actually praise and worship yes those are expressions that we continue to give to god in out of our joy and out of the um simple sheer uh, experience of having received his goodness we want to shout back and give him all the glory praise and honor but in the core of the heart of love is obedience and it's quite visible with abraham and he walks forward and on the third day i'm on verse 4 on the third day abraham lifted his eyes up and saw the place afar off and abraham said to his men stay here with the donkeys stay here with the donkeys we've seen how god in his care and his love want to birth within us a good character and so he allows some bit of testing to come along our lives to bring in to add in that part of character that part of resilience that part of strength that part of courage to our lives and we've also seen that god's directions also has his promises but here we see also god requires certain part of the journey with him to be alone with him there's a certain place that you and i need to learn from this story of abraham to say to all the support structures of your world that's around you stay here enough there's one part of journey that's required for you and your god and your promises to be alone with god every time you learn to be in this journey to be alone with god god knows how much he is going to add strength to you these are god's appointed times for you now abraham said stay here with the donkey and i will go up and i will come we have seen how faith is visible in this again i want to point back to the love that abraham had in the depth of his heart so that this faith could be visible and so abraham and his son go up mind you this part of the journey of our christian lives has a lot to do with god and god alone remember jesus himself took time away so many times in the scripture in the new testament we read this that jesus took time to go and spend time with his father he took time alone to spend time with his father your spiritual strength is not in the in the journey but it's in the times of those quietness you take with the god of this journey with the god of this journey so there are some parts of your journey you need to tell your support structures maybe that's a bank balance maybe that's a well paying job or maybe that's your spouse or maybe that's the family or maybe whatever those things that you put your significance on you need to learn to tell all of that to quieten down stay here beyond this point it's going to be between me and god and god loves this part of the journey in our lives you know sometimes in our lives you have everything but you know that you're missing something you have everything going well your work is going well but you know deep down in your heart you are unsettled and those are the times god clearly presents himself and calls for your attention for my attention to be with him these are the times god appointed times for us to be alone with god and know this very well every time you are alone with god you and i can be assured that we are never alone every time you and i are alone with god god assures us that you are never alone he is with us these are the times when crucial conversations happen most difficult times isaac is going to ask his dad dad you've got wood you've got fire everything coming up but where's the offering that's a difficult question right imagine you telling having this conversation with your son or with your daughter the precious gift that god has given you that precious gift is asking you some critical questions and you do not have answers 
and sometimes it's a difficult journey. This part is a heavy duty journey with God. And um, but choose to choose to know that God is with you during those times. How do we know? Come a little down while they go up the mountain, while this critical conversation happens. You don't see uh, Isaac wriggling out or uh, any of those matters that happen there. You see a beautiful um, familial understanding of who this God is. And you see Abraham's response to his son beautifully in Genesis chapter 22 verse 8. And Abraham said, my son, God will provide for himself the lamp for a burnt offering. So the two went together. So the two went together. Somehow, all of this bit of hearing from God has put in this faith in Abraham. By now, he knows and he has experienced this God who called him way back many years before in Genesis 12, in Genesis 13, in Genesis 15, and now in Genesis 22, Abraham's love for God, his relationship with God, is resulting in these faith statements that is passed on to the next generation. That is passed on to someone who knows him and who can hear these words of faith. My son, God will provide for himself the lamb for a burnt offering. And so the two went ahead. In all the journey, Abraham's hearing must have developed. And that's what God does in all this journey. Continue on, we'll jump to verse 13. Abraham's about to lift his hand and bring the axe down for sacrifice. And the angel of the Lord stops him saying, Abraham, Abraham, don't lay your hands on your son. I've seen, I'm reading from verse 12. Do not lay your hand on the lad or do anything to him. For I know that you fear God since you have not withheld your son, your only son from me. Then Abraham lifted his eyes and looked up. And there behind him was a ram caught in the thicket by its horns. So Abraham went and took the ram and offered it up for a burnt offering instead of his son. Amazing, isn't it? Just imagine Abraham would not pay attention to God's voice or his hearing skills would not be so sharp that at that moment of bringing the axe down, he was not paying attention to God's voice. He would have sacrificed his entire promise that God gave to him, right? And sometimes this is a good reminder for you and me. God does not want human sacrifices. God will not take away what he's given you as a blessing. What he's given you as a blessing is for you and he wants his children to enjoy. But in all of this, God's ways is that you would put him first, that there would be no hindrance no idols of any blessings between you and God. That God would be our object of worship. God would be the reason of our worship. That God would be the person of worship. And God amazingly had trained Abraham's ears so he would hear that at that point. But here's what something beautiful that happens. Here's a God who provides also. He is a God who provides. God never wanted human sacrifices. He has never accepted human sacrifices in the scriptures. And he never did with Abraham also. And he will not do with you and me also today. What he has given to you, he wants to reassure you. And sometimes when all of his work, his purposes in our life, in our pathway is done, this is what God does. He opened Abraham's eyes so he could see the ram stuck in the bush. Amazing, isn't it? That ram was there or I'm not sure if it was not there. But Abraham was not able to see the ram in that bush right nearby. But at that moment, God opened Abraham's eyes to see the provision of God. Preceding to this step was the faith declaration. That Abraham said, God will provide my son. God will provide. How amazing, isn't it? God will provide for you and me too. In this faith journey as we walk along, as 
He involves to instruct you, to teach you, to keep his eye on you and me and to guide you. He also will provide for us. Sometimes it's about wisdom. You are at the brink and your business break hasn't happened. It's about that wisdom God will provide. In those hundreds of meetings you had, but you never had a breakthrough. In that relationship struggle that you're having and you're wondering what's God going to do next. God will open your eyes at that right moment and you will see God's provision. Instead of giving up your dreams, instead of giving up your battles, there's victory exactly through that. Do you see God's ways of working? The very pathways of challenges, the very pathways of trials, the very pathways of the so-called problems that you and I are struggling with are the pathways to your blessing itself, are the pathways to enjoy God's provision for us. God reminds us even today that he is not a God who takes away what he gives. He wants to give to you. Here's my last point and I want to finish with this. Out of all of this, God reminds Abraham of the original calling he had given to him. In verse 17 and 18, so God says, Blessings I will bless you, Abraham, and multiplying I will multiply your descendants as the stars of the heaven. That's the promise he had given him before. And as the sand which is on the seashore, your descendants shall possess the gate of their enemies. In your seed, all the nations of the earth shall be blessed because you have obeyed my voice. One man's obedience can bring blessings to all the nations of the earth. Well, have you thought about this? If Abraham was blessed by God, Abraham's descendants and that clan should have been blessed, right? But that's not the words of the scripture. God declares, in your seed, all the nations of the earth shall be blessed. Nations of the earth requires a whole worldwide solution. How is Abraham's obedience connected to the worldwide blessings of... And this is God's voice. God's voice. God is telling them. It simply means this, that God has made a choice that in this descendant line of Abraham, there would be another son who will be born. His name will be called Jesus. And he, whoever believes in him, will have the gift of eternal life. They will not perish. And that's the greatest blessing the world has got till now. And that blessing goes to Abraham. My dear brothers and sisters, even you and me, God calls us to walk in this journey of developing an intimate relationship with him, of allowing our lives to be sharpened, to be cleaned sometimes, to be added with courage, resilience, obedience, and sharp skills to listen to his word. As we walk through difficulties of life and the blessings of all of this, it God chooses to give you and I the same blessing he gave Abraham too. In your seed, all the nations of the earth shall be blessed. Because you and I know this God and this name Jesus, every time you proclaim of this name to someone, Jesus is born in someone's life. And they are enjoying this blessings that Abraham was given to. You and I can be a part of this blessing too. Can you imagine this? What a beautiful blessing that you and I are called to be a blessing to the nations of the earth. Someone in America can listen to your voice. We've been blessed with technology, especially during this COVID time. Technology has taken a totally different, beautiful turn. And because of all of that, we can share this love of God. We can share this journey that we had with God. And you and I can be a blessing to the nations too. Can Jesus be born in someone's life? Yes. When you choose to obey God, when you choose to allow your life to have God's presence in every part of your difficulty, when he changes you inside out and when character is born, when his presence supersedes all your human presence and he begins to overflow out of your heart, this is what will happen. That God will use you and me to bless the nations 
of the world. So my dear brothers and sisters, as you sit through Feb, as you continue on with the second month of this year, we don't know how this year has started for us. We do not know how this year is going to go. But I want to point us towards a God who has seen everything. This God who promises, I will teach you, I will instruct you in the way you should go. I will keep my eye on you and counsel you. This God is willing to take your life and mine as his children. Shape us in such a way that we will hear his voice. We will know his care and compassion. And he's willing to walk this journey along with us. Times of alone with him. Times that we could be refreshed, encouraged and meet God on a mountain top where he's going to restore his promise to you. That promise that he gave to you, he's going to restore it to you. Where he's going to open your eyes and show you that he's willing to provide wisdom, blessings, all of those things. Those miracles that we've been looking for, that has not happened. Those things can exactly happen as he opens your eyes towards seeing God's provision. And above all, may he continue to birth within you and me a desire to share about Jesus to somebody. So you and I could be a part of a blessing to the nations of the earth as well. Would you allow God this month to lead you forward? Would you allow God to speak to you in ways that you can hear him? Would you allow God to build courage resilience and above all love and obedience and as a reflection of all of that faith to the next generation just like Abraham had spoken faith into Isaac's life you and I could continue to speak faith into someone's life would you make a covenant with me as I pray father we thank you for this morning for your word came out powerfully to us we pray O oh Lord we will know and understand that you have called each one of us by name. You've gifted us with the gift of adoption. We are your children and we can call you Abba Father. What a beautiful relationship, O Lord. While we continue to struggle in understanding you, we thank you for the word of God. We thank you for the so many live examples that point to you, O Lord. And this morning, we thank you for Abraham's life. For through his story, we have learned that you call us, that you continue to speak to us, that you continue to lead our journey with your presence, that you would show up when it's more difficult for us and you will talk to us. Thank you, Lord, that you've called us to spend times alone with you. We pray that you would birth within us a desire to have our quiet times, our prayer times, our alone times with you, just so that we would be assured that we are never alone. A God who promised, I will never leave you nor forsake you. I pray, O oh Lord, that this promise would be our experience as we walk through this month, as we continue on with this journey. I pray, O oh Lord, that in the most difficult, crucial moments, you would open our eyes to see your provision, to see your miracles. And I know how you've led your children Israelites. You promised them rivers where there are no water. You promised them ways in the wilderness. And I pray that that would be our experience today, O oh Lord. In this whole month, I pray that you would open our eyes to your provision, just like you did for Abraham. And I pray, O oh Lord, above all, that you would help each one of us to be a blessing to the nations of the world. Use us. Declare your glory through us. Speak of your life to others through us, O oh Lord. We thank you that your word is alive and it's a double-edged sword. We thank you for your Holy Spirit who is speaking to us. We love you and we ask this prayer in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Isn't that amazing, church, that we truly are the apple of God's eyes and that not one of us, not one of the aspects of our lives are hidden from him, that he cares about us so deeply. Isn't that encouraging? I don't know about you, but it's encouraged me. And if any of you 
If any of you feel um, like you have been increasingly anxious with things happening around the world, things happening in our city, things happening in our nation, um, anxiety has been gripping you, you've been struggling with worry and fear and, and overall stress, we have a new Bible plan that's out for you. It's called Beating Anxiety at Its Own Game. Uh, it's available on the YouVersion Bible app, it's available in different languages. We would urge you to do it either alone or with friends um, and be blessed. We believe that it's written for such a time as this and it's going to impact you, it's going to touch your life uh, because I believe that we must live lives that are completely abundant and full of God's presence and power and anxiety prevents us from living our lives uh, to the greatest potential that we are capable of. So, so we hope that the Bible plan would be an incredible blessing to each of you as you read it. As we close the service, can I just ask us to bow our heads in prayer and believe and believe that God has got every aspect of our lives in His hands, that He cares so deeply for us, that we are not afar from Him, that He loves us no matter what kind of grief we have gone through, no matter what kind of losses we have suffered, no matter how unloved we feel right now, that He considers us worthy, that He loves us, that we stand forgiven. Can we just thank Him for that? Father, we thank You. As we heard today, Father God, that we are so deeply loved by you. And I pray that, Lord, this week and every week after this, that we will walk in that constant assurance of knowing that we are loved, of knowing that we are cherished, of knowing that we are held in your hands, O oh Father. I pray that each of us will walk with that confidence and that, Father, we will do the great things you have commissioned us to do. I pray that you'll be with us in our going out and our coming in. Bless us and keep us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. If you enjoyed our service, you're most welcome to subscribe to our YouTube channel or follow us on Facebook and Instagram. We pray that you'll have an amazing week filled with God moments and with an ever-increasing awareness of His presence. If you have any prayer needs, if you just want to talk to someone, please contact us. The numbers are on the screen. You can email us too. Get in touch with us. We would love to journey with you. And most importantly, remember this, that whoever finds Jesus, finds life. God bless you.